welcome back guys in the last section we have completed the user authentication in the front end so we are done with the both login and registration screens now we are ready to start the back end so in this section we need not to open this client folder so we are going to work only in the server so first of all i'm going to create a new folder server so in this server i'm going to create an entry point server dot js but without any npm initialization this server is not going to work so what, what i'm going to do means i'm going to split the terminal into two parts first i will initialize the npm in the root level npm init that's all now i'm going to install the required modules npm install the first one will be express second one will be mongoose third one will be uh, json web token fourth one will be bcrypt js fifth one will be dot env mm. stripe related things we will install later first of all to get started we require all these things so just press enter so only the npm modules as well as the package json will be in the root level remaining all the relations all the code which is belongs to server will be present in this server folder only yep here you can see we got the our uh, package is ready and we also need to install nodemon to start the server npm i nodemon that's all so now let's expand the server here i am going to write const express is equal to require express const app is equal to express so app app dot listen so not on the local host 3000 port const port is equal to process dot env dot port if it is not available we are going to take it 5000 because in the 3000 we are already running the react app port so if it runs successfully i am going to write server started on port number 5000 so this is the simple back end code so let me run this nodemon server slash server because we are present in the root folder we are accessing the server file which is present inside the server folder so press enter here you can see i got the message server started on port number 5000 so now let me create the folder structure also first of all we are going to have the routes then models so if you have any middlewares you can have it obviously we are going to have the authentication middleware and config mm apart from this if you require anything new we will add it on the fly so that's all guys this is about the uh, node js and express js setup so in the next lecture we are going to work on the mongodb setup thank you Welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the node js setup now in this lecture we will be working on the mongodb connection with the node js so first of all go to your mongodb atlas account and copy the connection url so mongodb atlas so if you don't have an account please create it sign in so now i'm going to log in with my google credentials only introducing a termination production no so this is my mongodb dashboard so you have all the statistics of your usage 
so we don't need all this stuff let's go to the browse collections now here i'm going to create a new database share wallet udemy so by default i'm going to create the collection users and create it a collection with share wallet udemy users is already exist mm. what is this mm. okay let me write two okay Mm, share wallet udemy 2 so this is our db fine so let's go to the uh, close this somewhere you should have the connect button mm where is that yeah connect button so we are going to connect using the compass so if you click on this you are going to get the connection url with your uh, mongodb link so copy this and open your mongoose sorry not mongoose compass so mongodb compass expand this so i am just clicking on this connect button so that url is same so yeah here you can see so i got the users now let's go to the code base so the connection url is still in my copy so go to the config so here i'm just writing db config dot js so first thing is const mongoose is equal to require mongoose and before that create a dot env file in the root level and write mongo url is equal to sorry you can directly paste it so instead of this test just have share wallet udemy 2 and change this appropriate password that's all so mongoose is okay now i'm just writing the code to connect the mongodb and node.js so const connection is equal to mongoose dot connect process dot env dot mongo url now i am going to write const connection result is equal to simple connection dot connection or else if it is confusing you can keep it a different name connection obj here also you can do the same thing mm instead of this just get rid of this <laughs> and now connection result is equal to mongoose dot connection yeah so now connection result dot on so we are going to have the callback methods like on and connected so connection result dot on error we are going to write console dot log console dot log connection error connection result dot connection result dot on connected on connected connected to database or i'm just writing our normal thing mongodb connection mongodb connected successfully so now module dot exports is equal to module dot exports is equal to mongoose 
or else connection result let's export the connection result only so go to the server.js and write oh not this you just need to write the import statements const db config is equal to require dot slash config slash db config so it is loading let's see what happens so we got an error mm. listener argument let's restart the server because we didn't restart the server after adding the dot env still the same mm. i think we have to write some code to import the dot env require dot env config so dot env is also there but still the same mm here it is showing the issue is at line number 7 okay okay got it so here you can see instead of the callback functions we have directly written this code so just put it in the callbacks now this should be perfect server started on port 5000 connected to database so our database connection is also fine so in the next lecture we are going to work on the user authentication in the back end thank you welcome back guys in the last section we have completed the back end setup like node js server setup as well as the node js and mongodb connection so now in this section we are going to wrap up the authentication by building the login and registration apis so before getting started with the login and registration apis first we should have the user model so we can also call this as user as well as the account so in lot of the scenarios we will call it as the account only but we are building a wallet not the bank account so i am just calling it as user so let's go to the server models so here i am just calling it as user model or users model you can call it anything dot js so const mongoose is equal to require mongoose then const user schema is equal to new user schema so first we'll start with the first name first name type string required true similarly last name type string required true close it similarly email same uh, after email we have phone number required true then we have uh, identification type identification type type string required true then identification number type string required true then address type string required true and at the last you are going to have the password string required true so these are the fields we are taking from the user from this form registration form first name last name and all this stuff etc now i am additionally going to attach two more properties the first one is verified is verified because we need to approve only verified accounts to login because it is a valid or banking application where Ver is verified so if this account is verified type boolean default false this is okay and the next one is is admin 
so only admin can verify so we will create one admin account so the admin can access all the user accounts so if you want to verify he can verify else he can reject that's all so now i'm going to create the timestamps also timestamps true so we have the user model so let's go and export this module dot exports is equal to mongoose dot model the collection name should be users and the schema is nothing but user schema so we have the model ready now we can build the user route so let's go to the users route dot js so const router is equal to express router then i am going to write const user is equal to so i uh, require model slash user model so let's have the first endpoint register user account user account that's all so now i'm just writing so for the register endpoint i'm going to show our api structure how every api should look like so first we are going to have the comment at the top then we are going to have the followed api so in every api first we are going to have the try catch block try catch so now in the try catch first we will perform all the operation if anything goes wrong it will go to the catch block so in the catch block i'm going to send response dot send method so message is equal to error dot message and one more thing we will send success success is equal to false so this is our response structure in every object or every endpoint so now let's uh, work on this register so we have to encrypt the user password right for that i'm going to use const bcrypt is equal to bcryptjs so first i'm going to write const uh password is equal to um, or else not like this i'm just writing the code for hashing the password hash password so first we have to create the salt by using this bcrypt object with uh, 10 rounds now i'm going to write const hashed password is equal to await bcrypt dot hash so in the hash method the first parameter is the plain text that you want to encrypt so we want to encrypt our request dot body dot password and then the salt number of salt rounds is equal to this salt variable so now i am going to attach this to the request dot body request dot body dot password is equal to hashed password now you can write the save method await sorry not like this const new user is equal to new user of request dot body await new user dot save so we need not to send the any saved object so in the response you just have to send response dot send same structure here also so message user created successfully data so whatever the data you want to send you just need to send it in the data variable data i'm not going to send anything i'll just keep it null because if you send this uh, user object it will have the password so at any cost you should not send the password to the front end so here we don't require anything that is the reason i'm just sending it data is equal to null so then success is equal to true that's all so if you observe here we are missing one thing we are directly hashing the password and storing the data but we are not checking the duplicate users so first we have to check the duplicate users not here in the try block itself so i am just checking the condition check if user already exist so simple let user is equal to await user dot find one so we are finding with the help of email so if user dot exist we are going to have response dot 
टू हंड्रेड ओनली ऑलवेज सेंड द टू हंड्रेड ओनली सो द स्ट्रक्चर शुड बी सेंड मेथड नॉट द जेसन सो रेस्पॉन्स डॉट सेंड सक्सेस फॉल्स सक्सेस फॉल्स मैसेज यूजर ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्ट सो वी नीड नॉट टू डू एनी थिंग हियर सो ऑबियसली इट विल रिटर्न हियर सो वंस इट गेट रिटर्न इट विल नॉट एग्जीक्यूट द बिलो लॉजिक सो देर वोट बी एनी इश्यूज सो दिस इज द रजिस्ट्रेशन लॉजिक सो नाउ लेट्स राइट द लॉग इन लॉजिक सो द लॉग इन लॉजिक इज ऑल्सो वेरी सिंपल यू जस्ट हैव टू जनरेट सम टोकन एंड यू हैव टू सेंड इट टू द फ्रंट एंड एंड बिफोर जनरेटिंग द टोकन यू हैव टू कंपेयर विद द हैशड पासवर्ड सो देन ओनली इट विल वर्क सो हियर लेट्स राइट रोटर डॉट पोस्ट एज लाइक द रजिस्टर हियर ऑल्सो ट्राई कैच ट्राई कैच नाउ फर्स्ट यू हैव टू चेक इफ यूजर एग्जिस्ट सो ईमेल सो इफ नॉट यूजर सेम यूजर डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट देन यू हैव टू चेक इफ द पासवर्ड इज करेक्ट so const valid password so if it is true then uh, that means the password is valid and we are having await bcrypt dot compare so with the, with the help of bcrypt dot compare we are comparing the normal password with the uh, encrypted password which is uh, having in the user so it will take care of the salt rounds and all those things you just have to give the first parameter as the plain password second parameter as the encrypted password so it will give the result in this valid password now if valid if not valid password password is incorrect so the error message is invalid password and at the end you have the generate token so if the control passes these uh, two scenarios then the user is valid now you just have to generate the token so i am just writing const token is equal to first you have to import the jwt const jwt is equal to require json web token so i am just generating the token with the help of the user id so json dot sign so json dot sign is nothing but it will encrypt the data this data with this secret code so now let's go and write the jwt secret jwt secret so go to the process env jwt secret is equal to i will write our project title share wallet so even while the decrypting also you have to use the same token then only it would work and now in the jwt sign the first parameter will be the content that you want to encrypt so i want to encrypt user id user id is nothing but user underscore id or even if you want to encrypt the complete user information also you can encrypt but uh, this is not required so user id is enough and the third parameter is how much time this token is valid so i am going to write the validity one day one day is nothing but one day so it is going to expire the token in the one day now you have this token right so if everything is correct we will send the data is equal to token message is equal to user logged in successfully and data is nothing but just the token nothing else success true close this here put a comma i think we are good now let's send error dot message so we are done with the two authentication endpoints login and registration so if you are new to the jwt authentication it is somewhat difficult to understand don't worry so while working on the ui as well as the testing you will understand better so simple guys so in while the registration we are encrypting the password that is somewhat the complex logic and while login so we should not allow the user to uh, enter into the application with you only user and password so every time we should have the jwt token for the request so that is the reason we are having this jwt concept if it if it is uh, new for jwt of course it is difficult but uh, i don't have any other choice so i have to explain in this way only so now i'm just writing 
module dot exports is equal to router and that's all so i think we are good now let's go to the server dot js export the users route users route now i'm going to write the entry point for the user route app dot use express jaws json so this should be at the top actually now i'm just writing app dot use for all the request which are having the endpoint slash users slash uh, slash api slash users we are going to send it to the users route that's all guys so i think we are good so if it is feeling anything difficult to understand this register and login endpoint you need not to worry so after working on the ui testing you will understand better so thank you see you in the next class welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the login and registration endpoints in the back end so now in this lecture we are going to integrate that endpoints to the front end and we will call that and we will test everything so first of all in the front end you have to add the proxy which is nothing but the back end endpoint so proxy is equal to localhost 5000 this is fine now let's go to the uh src api calls users so here i am going to have my first api call and before that i am going to have a new file called as the index.js so for every api call i don't i need not to write the axios.post and all this stuff first of all we have to install the axios i forgot that sorry npm i axios so because after the login and registration for every api call you have to send the jwt token in the headers so instead of sending that in the every axios.post and axios.get you can have the axios instance so by default headers will be sent in that axios function so let me restart the server even you have to restart the back end also because we have added some new variables in the dot env so here i'm just writing import axios from axios so now i'm just writing export const axios instance is equal to axios dot create of course base url will be localhost 5000 but we need not to do this it will all uh, automatically go from the proxy so we just need the headers headers is equal to so we will send headers in the form of authorization authorization so it should be bearer slash local storage dot get item token because after the login we are going to store the local storage with the help of the uh, token like this so if i could tell this axios instance concept after the login that would be easy but uh, right now also try to understand this so now let's go to the users so let's import that axios instance so it got imported now i'm just writing the first api call login user so i'm just writing export const login user so here you can see i'm following the capital thing everything login and user so we will get the payload from the what it is uh, uh component login page so i'm just writing try catch block here also try catch so 
cons data is equal to axios uh, sorry await axios dot post slash api slash user slash login and we are sending it as payload and we are returning the data to the component from wherever it is called and here it should be same error dot response dot data so i think we are good and now let's go to the second one register user same export const register user so i got the snippet so const data is equal to await axios instance dot post slash api slash users slash register and payload will be coming from the component and we are returning the data so everything is looking cool now let's go to the pages index.js so this is the unfinished function right so here also you have to write the try catch block try catch try catch and make this function async so i'm just writing const response is equal to await register user so this is not the back end endpoint this is our api call function so now i'm just writing if response dot success mess oh sorry message message from the entity message dot success response dot message and navigate to login else show message dot error and even in the cache block also do the same message dot error perfect now let's go to the login so here also make it async try catch block try catch block same const response is equal to await login user so if response dot success message dot success so no don't navigate now uh, login we will discuss it later just show the success message so if it is error else part will be executed so in the else part you are going to have the error even in the catch block also you have the error so everything is okay message is not defined here let's import the login user as well as the message perfect let's go to the screen so in the home page we don't have anything so let's go to the register once awesome so after adding the proxy you have to restart the server let's restart it then only it will work close everything i think the last lecture and this lecture is somewhat uh, confused but don't worry this is the normal and basic authentication process so if you are a aspiring monstack developer definitely you should have already learned this thing for the first time we may get the errors because we did the lot of complex functionality in the sim one lecture network yep it is getting open here this is the deployed hmm it got executed so let me go to the register once yep so the register got open so let's open the network but similarly so as like every time let's start with ronaldo last name den email ronaldo123@gmail.com mobile number 9639639630 identification number 1234 passport uh, address i'll keep it india for the time being password 1234567 here also 1234567 so let's hope for the best and click on the register button 
so users validation failed phone number is required so let's see what we are sending from the phone number in the front end pages register index where is phone number okay so you have the mobile number so keep it as phone number so this time it should work i believe phone number is still required what the heck is this already we changed it right last name is okay phone number is not even going hmm what happened okay let's refresh and try this ronaldo sorry then email ronaldo123 at gmail dot com mobile number 9639639630 driving license 1234 address india password 1234567 confirm password 1234567 let's clear the network and hit the api awesome so here you can see user created successfully and i have navigated to the login page so if i go to the mongodb users i should see the ronaldo awesome so first name last name email phone number identification type identification number address password is verified everything is okay so we need to have one more property that is balance balance amount so let's go to the model so at the end add one more property balance amount sorry type number default zero okay so now let's go to the register and try to register the user with the same details so i'm just having the different uh, uh, normal fields but i'm going to have the same email so it has to throw me the error so i am just using the same email register user already exist awesome so registration logic is working fine now let's go to the login so our user is ronaldo123@gmail.com password is 1234567 let's get rid of everything in the console and network register data is not defined what the heck is this go to the back end mm users route where is data uh, uh, where 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 is data so here data no we have to send token not data perfect now let's hit it once again it has to work awesome so here you can see user logged in successfully now let's test the negative scenarios also i'm just keeping invalid email user does not exist now i will keep the valid email and invalid password invalid password so every expected scenario is working so i think we are good with the authentication part so next we have to work on the authorization so that is somewhat difficult so after completing the authorization you would understand why we have written all this stuff in the login uh, what it is uh, jwt logic so you will understand this logic once we complete the authorization so right now we have not used this token for anything so once we complete the authorization section you can easily understand why we are using where we are using how it is working etc so thank you see you in the next section